come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, welcome back, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show Podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. All that we ask that you do in order to help us on this enterprise to become the fastest growing podcast in the galaxy is going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button or give us a review all of that stuff helps us rise through the algorithms and rise uh, that's right <laughs> that's what we want to do we want to arise arise we also want you to go over and check out some of our awesome merchandise we have over where michaela public.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show. We got a couple different designs. We got you got different styles of shirts. You can get tank tops. You can get sweatshirts. So all year round, get you can get Freak Show stuff. Yeah, get a koozie. Yeah. yeah. All right. Buddy. We have every sleeve length you can want in a shirt. It's there. <laughs> every sleeve length, three every quarter. Sleeve. Yeah, there's yeah, three, quarter three quarter baseball quarter? tees. Yeah, there's baseball Ooh. tees. Ooh. Ooh. I like I like three quarter. All right. So Love a baseball tee. Sleeves. Yeah. Shit. Love right. a baseball tee. And help us help you that way. Oh, we, uh, these are the internet radio superstars. Je m'appelle Holly. <laughs> Michaela. John. <laughs> and I'm Colin. We. And tonight we watched a movie oh. which was. Uh-huh. 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 We watched a movie that was chosen by. <laughs> Michaela. What we watched tonight? We watched Nomads. Guess who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be a thing all night, guys. So buckle up and get used to it. Uh, from the year 1985, sometimes 86, depending where you look. And uh, who is it directed by? John McTiernan. Who we would know from? What? Okay, okay, hold on. This guy had probably the greatest run of directing over the course of like a decade and a half. Let me just. He pull did. This is the only one I didn't know. Yeah, he. Hold on. Let me pull up his. Oh, hell, I can do it from it. memory. We got Predator. We got Die Hard. We got no. Die Hard with a Vengeance. We got The Hunt for no. Red October. We got Medicine no. Man. Everybody like Medicine Man. Yeah, I had to watch that in no. school, actually. We got uh, Rollerball, the remake of Rollerball. That's where it ended. That's like one of his last credits. And basic. basic in 2003. Yeah. I said Die Hard okay, with a Vengeance, This guy's right? career is insane. So this was the first movie he ever directed, Nomads. Then immediately followed it up with Predator. Mm-hmm. Then immediately followed that with Die Hard. Then The Hunt for Red October, Medicine Man, Last Action Hero, right. Die Hard with a Vengeance, and The Thomas Crown Affair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Last have, Action Hero. This guy hits for 13 years straight. Man. Yeah. yeah. Like what a classic <laughs> action director. Like, <laughs> and the story goes that Schwarzenegger saw this movie, liked it so much that he hired John McTiernan to film Predator. Yeah, because of thought, this like, movie. The, because the of this of, movie. Yeah, because he's like he specifically cited that in his memoir. Like he, like Schwarzenegger wrote about this in his memoir, this movie, and he was saying that he loved like how well crafted the tension was and how like he kind of like how everything was tense all the time in this movie, and he wanted that energy in Predator. Right. It's like you know what you'd be good for an alien movie. Uh, it turns out he was right. I mean, that's uh yeah. Right. <laughs> Credit Arnold Schwarzenegger for spotting talent. <laughs> that I was like, like, like who knew? I guess so. <laughs> like He's John like, McTiernan has a career because of Schwarzenegger, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, leave it to Arnold Schwarzenegger to look into shit and pull out John McTiernan and be like, "You can have a career." Yeah. I saw it in this movie. But yeah. like there are, how many directors have a run that spans that many years without a single failure in there, you know, like, I mean, after Thomas ground affairs, where it goes downhill, he's only got three credits after that, but like everything up until that made a fuck ton of money and like is kind of a cultural touchstone, even for most of these. I remember yeah. the colossal disappointment of, uh, of medicine, man, to me, I mean, I have to go back and watch it. I'm sure it's a fine as a drama, but the expectation from the director of predator Die Hard, and hunt for <laughs> October, yeah medicine yeah man. yeah but i feel like it still made a lot of money though you <laughs> it know was his bridges of madison county yeah or what uh, <laughs> what the heart wants or whatever west craven's movie was yeah 
I mean, McTiernan may be, I mean, I don't know if he is celebrated as one of the greatest of the eighties action directors. I think like just the way that he was able to put action together back then, you know, they're kind of these, uh, really like realistic brawny, uh, you know, action thrillers, some of the greatest stuff, but this is not an action movie. This is a, a, a horror movie uh, that he wrote and directed. <laughs> And so I, I'm not entirely sure then, Michaela, uh, prior to this, I mean, what was his, I mean, was he a film school student? Was he a music video director? Like, what do you know about, uh, like, how did, he, how did he arrive on the scene? He has no credits before this, as far as like directing or really involved in producing, writing, nothing. He wrote this movie too. Hmm, yeah. So, which to me is weird because it doesn't read as a movie that was like came from one mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, the script seems at odds with the directing. I feel like a lot in this movie. So it's very strange to me that he wrote and directed it. See, I feel like it makes sense to me, but because I view it as like, there's a vision in someone's mind that he didn't quite get out on paper and on film the way he, the way he, the way he sees it, you know? Yeah. Well, they say what like filmmakers get 40%. You're lucky if you get 40% of the vision in your head on, on film. Right. So, sure. yeah. Uh, I feel like he's filling in a lot of his holes in his head, but not for us. Yeah. I'd love that. to see this movie at 100%. Because <laughs> 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 we, we got 40 tonight. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I don't know what the, the genre of, this is, um, it almost in some way seems that like this, tone this movie tone like kind of gives birth to the type of like cheaper uh horror films that you see now the uh like you know the um what would you call them they're like um the very ponderous uh you know slow burn horror movies with an idea but they, they don't have a budget and they do everything really small um this has a little bit more money than that but uh it still seems to be like okay we're gonna do like arty horror would you say it's an art horror or elevated horror yeah, yeah, I would because you know I had a moment watching this and I I figured out what I didn't like about this movie was I feel like if this was made two or three years ago by A twenty four everyone would be saying it was a fucking awesome movie. Yeah, you're right. People would love yeah, this there you if go. it was made by A twenty four two or three years ago. Yeah, it's an A twenty four movie made in nineteen eighty five. It kind of to me almost felt like I mean, have you guys seen like The Hunger or you know like uh, I just think it's like it's following the Tony Scott you know tony and ridley scott uh you know aesthetic where we're gonna yeah. put a slate i know what you, know, you mean blinds you know the light coming through uh venetian blinds all over the walls and it's gonna have that kind of you know sleek urban look to it right palin like are you saying hunger it's like it, it did it did kind of remind me of that movie a little bit too but it also reminded me of wolfen mm -hmm. that like police procedural werewolf movie from the 80s that you're like cool i'm gonna see a werewolf movie and then it's like not not really like that's kind of the, how, the vibe of this movie mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah well um so why don't well i guess first um and i suppose you know obviously we're going to spoil this movie for those of you who haven't seen it but uh i mean we will talk about are we do we are we, are we going to be able to <laughs> well maybe not because as <laughs> as art films go if we're going with that then basically the movie is up to the eye of the beholder it is important what you the viewer thought of the movie more than it is what the director was actually trying to say it's all about the impression of it right mm -hmm. um and i'm know, saying this like a cop out because well it may be because i'm saying this be, you know only because i'm approaching the movie this way because it defies like logic reason and sanity in its construction and all this stuff uh so it's like i think they're trying to you know like cross the barrier into like just the the subconscious how you how you perceive it and how it washes over you i could be wrong okay first question you could then. be wrong you could be right uh it's a, it's an ethereal movie and like you said yeah i mean i think we pretty much end up at the point where it's just like what does it mean to you okay if anything. well we will break down the plot but my first question to the group is this the title is nomads tell me what a nomad is in this movie what what are the titular nomads 80s street punks that don't sleep they roam. They are roamers. They don't stay in one place. Um, yeah. are we, do we want to encompass the nomads that yeah. all of the nomads Pierce Brosnan is just. Yeah. 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 Tell does. me, tell me how you like, what, what are they and what do they want? What is their goal? I mean, these are the, the antagonists of the movie, right? Yes. Okay. What is it 
<laughs> or who are they? <laughs> well, I mean, Pierce Brosnan has been in other countries studying nomads, groups of people that do not stay in one place. They wander around. And so he's studying them to see to, to their, I mean, he's studying everything about them, their interactions with culture at large, that they right. don't he, do that, that they stay to themselves. They don't sleep. They don't stay in one place. He's studying them like animals at this point. Right. He's, he's, a, he's an anthropologist. So this is his yes. life's work is studying nomads of the world. A French a, anthropologist. A French uh, yes. anthropologist. French is very important to this movie. Very, a very, French. very important. Okay. Very French anthropologist. But he ends up seeing, um, uh, he finishes his work sort of, and then he ends up moving with his wife to Los Angeles where they've come to settle down. But he notices the things he's been studying abroad that he has found in Los Angeles. But these ones are different, correct? Like this yes. isn't like the nomads that he has been, exp you know, researching around the world, right? Mm. These nomads are somehow supernatural. I mean, they are supernatural. Yes. Are we going with concrete? They are supernatural creatures. Have you yes. now That's seen the, the poster movie? says so? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. poster said supernatural. Like said the tagline said something about them being supernatural beings. Yeah the, yeah, the tagline says all the all the words horror, supernatural, uh, entertainment, exciting, and yeah. well, yeah. It even it's, has a spooky it, monster poster. Like they look like is, monsters on the poster. It is. Yeah, but it, it takes us it takes us a hot minute to get into the the uh, ghost nomad stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, this is a French marriage drama for a long time. Yeah. Well, it, it feels European. This feels like a foreign movie. Now I know they're French, and that adds to it. But the whole. Everything else, just the the atmosphere of the movie, the feeling it, of the movie, always it feels very European. It reminded me a lot of like the tone and everything reminded me of Possession. Yeah, so I was just gonna yeah. say, okay. but, right. yeah. Yeah. but why? Yeah. Why did they have to be French? Well, that was my next question. What, why? Yeah. Why? What, what is the? What's the reason? Why would you write your movie and have a French? Uh, is it because the director is he French? I, he's, so? I believe he's. Uh, I mean, I, I don't he's know what like he's born in Boston or something. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't know what his family heritage is, it, is, but is it his last name Palmier? No. Well, that's the character's last name. Yeah. John oh, that's the character's the name. Sorry, yeah. that's the character's name. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, because very the, lost. The only thing is that you know, I mean, if you if you make your movie and you write your lead character as a French uh, anthropologist, then you have to have you know, I mean, your actor has to either be has French, has to be Gerard Depardieu, which apparently that's who he wanted to be. That's who the role was written for, which would have been a wildly different movie. Holy shit! <laughs> Can you imagine Gerard Depardieu? That nose yes. leading you through this movie? No, because yes. there's too many stairs you would have to walk up. I can't see him doing that. <laughs> what well, was Gerard Depardieu like in 1986? I think he was still chugging. Okay, so then why don't we make him an Irish anthropologist? If you just he want wasn't someone peeing on airplanes yet, Sean, he wasn't pissing himself on airplanes and cussing out the flight staff. I know nothing of this. I know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's like what he done in the past like 10 years of his career is yeah, he, he wasted on flights and then piss himself and then yell well, yeah the isn't that what he staff. does now he just drinks wine well, like yeah. i'm pretty sure his big yeah, breakthrough I mean, he into, in the, yeah in the u.s it. i think his first big movie was a movie called green card with andy mcdowell i remember there was a big hubbub about like french's you know france's greatest actors finally made the leap to hollywood but i you know he was revered <laughs> yeah, over there. And, but i mean this is my question he up in uh my uh my father, the hero. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now he's back doing Asterix and Obelisk or whatever the, you know, if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not sure. The comic strip hero that's uh. like huge over in, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, so why don't you make him an Irish uh, anthropologist or something? If you're just trying to go with some kind of like not American exotic world traveled, you know, uh, history uh, or sorry, anthropologist, then, um, you know, you're going to cast Pierce Brosnan. Why make him do a French accent? I think I have an answer. All right. Because I think because um, the part was written for Gerard Depardieu. Um, so it's French in the script. Um, and I think when he wasn't available to do it, Pierce Brosnan read it. And this was his first leading role in a movie. And he wanted to, he wanted a challenge. So I, I'm going to guess that he, saw the French accent as a challenge for him. And he really wanted to step up and make that part of the movie. So I'm guessing he decided, no, I'll do it as French because he wanted the challenge. And it was a challenge for him. Yeah, <laughs> right about yes, that. Yes, it was. 
Pierce Shout Brosnan, uh, at the time, of course, like for those of you who don't remember, it was like a big star on a TV show called Remington Steel, which was kind of, he played a a suave British, he wasn't a, a secret agent or anything. Maybe he'd been a former spy, I'm not sure, but obviously that was like, there was talk even then that like this guy's going to be the next James <laughs> Bond, you know. I think he was a gentleman thief. Yeah, there you go. I think he was. And uh, so this was his big leap into, into motion pictures. So, um, so okay, so his, his wife, well, I mean, the, how do you even go through the plot of this <laughs> movie? Because this, this movie, well, this um, movie uses. Okay, Colin, a, we're not being graded on this, so okay. don't worry. Well, I'm just trying to explain it to like the folks at home who are like, what are you guys talking about? Okay, so this movie employs a technique right a storytelling technique where it's going to have two branching narratives right which is another question that i uh, have about like why you'd make the movie this way but the movie opens with pierce brosnan apparently at the end of his story where he's had a some type of accident he's in an emergency room he's shouting in french leslie ann down is a doctor who sees to him and he's freaking out and he grabs her and whispers something in her ear that we don't hear. And then he dies and his character is dead, but that's not the end of his story because, uh, he has somehow transmitted verbally, uh, his consciousness or his memories into Leslie and down. <laughs> right. Yes. So right there, we got a big ask of you, uh, in the audience. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, I, think he, I think he like kind of attacked her because they're doing stitches on her ear. Did, did he bite her? I think yeah. he bit her ear because they said something about, well, if you keep biting your lip, your ear, it's going to look like your ear. Yeah. Oh, is that and what then, that joke then? And then they remember they were doing yeah. stitches on her. Yeah. So he, yeah. But, okay. So he whispered, but did he whisper something? Into Holyfield's ear. <laughs> uh, it, I, he, I think so. Cause it, I think we saw the whisper. We didn't see the bite. Like I thought it was just a whisper and, and then he fell off and he died and it was done. Apparently he bit her. I yeah. did not see yeah. he fell over was somehow injured in the, by his cuffs or something like that because he's been handcuffed yes. and he's a crazy raving man. And then they find mm -hmm. out of course that he was actually this like world renowned anthropologist. Um, but she begins experiencing pretty shortly thereafter all of these visions from his perspective from the moment that he and his wife moved into Los Angeles. And so, therefore, we're going to have two parallel stories running at the same time where basically she is retracing his steps through the you know the last couple of days of his life to try so we can figure out how did he end up in the stretcher at the beginning of the movie uh so it's mm -hmm. all very mysterious and this is i mean it's mysterious so i was kind of intrigued were you guys sure at this point For, well at least at in a, <laughs> i would say usually in a mystery they'll give you uh, you're intrigued at the beginning and then they will mm -hmm. if you're doing it right they'll drop you little nuggets to keep you on the hook going along until we get to the end i don't feel like i got the nuggets in this movie no. i feel like it was just a okay what's gonna yeah. happen and then had, for an hour and a half yeah i had a mild curiosity i guess is the most generous way i can put it at this point in the movie but, but it, like did, that, it didn't last long <laughs> i like that you described this movie as like going through the drive through mcdonald's and they forget something you're like god damn it they yeah. forgot the nuggets yeah oh, son of a bitch <laughs> i'm not going back <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, to my mind, there are two scenes that are integral to understanding the movie um, that we will eventually hit. But one involves uh, the doctor's friend uh, getting a phone call uh, from a person who basically gives her the information, uh, a certain piece of information. And then there's a later son with a, a scene with a ghostly nun that gives a little bit more information from it. And you're like, okay, is this what's actually happening? So anyway, um, so, so we see all these flashbacks and then Pierce Brosnan basically becomes the protagonist of the movie, right? We see him moving into the new house with his wife. And shortly thereafter, there is graffiti written on his garage. This is something to the effect of like kill pigs, something's not written in like blood or red paint, right? It's see, and it doesn't make sense. Cause it said, it said like sex, death, kill pigs or something yes. like that. Something very odd that didn't make sense. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? And in his garage, they have left a, a, a carpet that's rolled up. And inside the carpet are a bunch of bloody uh, newspaper clippings. And so this is also like hinting at the idea that somehow Pierce Brosnan and his wife have murdered, moved into a murder house. 
Right. Yes. Right. Apparently. Who died in that house? Two girls. And I know that. I guess from reading the, I have no idea. I, I think it's two <laughs> girls because I read the, I read the Wikipedia. Oh, oh okay. All right. All right. That's the only reason I know. I haven't well, read that. So that's why I was like, I don't well, think I got that from the movie. I wouldn't have known anybody who died in the house. Well, did it, did not one of the newspaper clippings say something about like mutilated children, like a, a parents like killed their kids or something. Yeah. And then he, at some point holds the newspaper clipping up. It's got a picture of the front of the house. And they're like, Oh my God, it's the same house. And then he makes the connection that they are drawn to death. And that wasn't a good French accent. Uh, the I they, I sound like you sound like Jacques from the Beatles. Cartoon. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, how is like anything that happened in the house previously relevant to this movie, though? You know, like are the nomads like? The, is this the only house they kill people in? They just anybody who moves in this house, they just kill them. Like otherwise, how is it relevant? Like. Well, the only thing I can explain it by is the one line of dialogue where he like has an aha moment and says that they're drawn to the, to death or something like that. How he makes this assumption. I don't know, but, and who's the, they he's talking about here. What, who, who is they, who are these people tormenting him? The, the, the Inuit. What? They're the Inuit, which is a, a form of a roaming demon that likes to cause chaos and evil. But they look like '80s, like goth street punks, though. I like, think they take they well. They take the form of uh, uh, what their environment is. I think, like whatever they're around, they're in they're in '80s LA. I, uh, I think they fit in. I know yeah. we don't have any evidence to know in this movie that that's true. That's the thing. Like it's very true. At what point? You extrapolate a lot. Yeah. At what point did they reveal that there are these demon things? When did we learn that? That was hinted at at that uh, that phone call that I was talking about. The uh, so at some point after she becomes uh, in the, the the in the parallel storyline, right? The Leslie Ann Down Doctor character must have called because she starts speaking in French and stuff that she can't understand. She bleeds out her eyes as she's basically reliving this guy's uh, you know uh, last days. She must have called a friend of hers in Boston who calls back and leaves a message or for her with her friend uh, that explains that she, the word that you're looking for is Inuit, which is used by the Eskimos. And apparently it means like real person or something like that. And it's like, they're, they're these, supposedly these spirits who wander the earth. Right. And so the mm -hmm. idea that we're given is that the nomads, these 80 street punks who run, run around in a van and look very much like the Cobra death cult, right. From Cobra. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they are somehow, evil spirits right um okay so we get all that from a phone call from the phone call well it's added to by the information that pierce brosnan later gets from a ghostly nun but uh from the on. nun okay yeah, but okay. we'll, uh, we'll yes. get how he gets the ghostly nun here in a second but i guess uh so my f i'm just i guess the, the the piece of information that i'm missing and maybe you can help me with is like what do they want what do they do okay so they they're here on earth and they wander and he observes them, right, by want, going around and, like, photographing them. He leaves his wife for 30 hours so he, because he's obsessive. So he can go out and take pictures of these punks, like, hanging out on the boulevard and basically doing nothing, yeah, kind of grooving to 80s, you know, guitar rock. He, he thinks that they're crazy because they've stayed up for 30 hours straight and haven't slept or anything. But he followed them for 30 hours straight. To me, that's crazier. Like yeah. the fact that you're staying up 30 hours straight to follow people around, take pictures of them. No, you're the you're the problem in this situation. Right. I think yeah. he's just falling back on on the skills he used when he was in other countries. Because I'll bet that's the exact same thing he did when he was in other countries. 30, 30 hours straight of just following people and but studying. He was so yeah. shocked by the fact that they didn't sleep that he wrote sleep in all caps, underlined question marks across a whole page of his notebook mm -hmm. he was like appalled at the fact that they didn't sleep it's like well dude you haven't either if you've been following them for 30 hours right yeah they're tireless like they're, all night like they're partiers. just on a bender you're the crazy one 
Yeah. Yeah. Some he of- met a few. He met a few bikers on a coke bender, and he's like, "Ah, they're nomads." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he says something like, to his wife yeah, about. Down, French kid. He's like, uh, you know, it's like this. You know, the nomads are here. They're in Los Angeles. So, like, we moved to a, you know, the a metropolis, and it turns out that there are still people who choose to live off the grid and don't actually exist. Uh, you know, to uh, a society. Which is, yeah. I guess, the statement. Maybe if there's a statement there that the movie's trying to make, I don't know. I can't read it. That you know, it's like uh, you know, these people actually do like not exist, and all the movie says they really don't exist. If you get my meaning, right. <laughs> they're not there at all. Although I'm, I'm not clear on that either. By the time the movie, at which, over. Point, yeah, I was gonna say, which point are they not? Are they always not there? Yeah, are they physical <laughs> beings or not? Because uh, he takes all these pictures and takes the film back to develop it, and turns out like they're not on any of the photos uh we may recognize like the lead guy is uh adam ant the singer the new wave mm-hmm. punk singer he's like the they're all wordless performances i don't think any of the nomads actually speak and one of them is mary Warrenov, uh who i'm sure mf matt is going to tell us is making her way to the saturday night freak show wall of fame from this movie because she was also in chopping mall and uh she was in warlock Right. She was the witch in Warlock uh, or the fortune teller. Resume. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And she's been in a bunch of other stuff and is a recognizable face. But she's the one who uh, when when Pierce Brosnan is taking pictures of them, she they all kind of notice that he's taking pictures. And so she dances for him while gyrating to music, apparently supplied by Ted Nugent. Did you see the credits? I saw that. Yeah. (laughs) That seems on brand for him, though. Yeah, especially have you guys seen like what's been in what's been in the news today about him saying like why about COVID-19? No. <laughs> oh, no. God, I can only imagine it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's really stupid. He doesn't understand why there wasn't a pandemic for COVID's one through 18. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, that's, that's a, the level we're working sad. with, huh? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But as All a right. guitarist, Ted Nugent was always considered <laughs> one of the best. Uh, this movie is like wall to wall, even though the music's by Rockies. Bill Conti, uh, Ted Nugent supplies like a whole lot of uh, what do you call that kind of guitar rock? I mean, Rip, it's, yeah. it's like 80s guitar rock, but it always sounds like you're recording in the middle of a tin can or a big tin room or something like that. Um, I always remember him because when guitar. I worked at Barnes and Noble, I would always shelve his cookbook and it always stood out to me because it was called Kill It and Grill It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It was this like was a, a big, hunter's like yeah. cookbook. Yeah. I remember it was that. very. <laughs> You know, like camo y, like, yeah, you know, cookbook. Yeah. yeah. Right next to the Duck Dynasty books. Exactly. Well, I mean, that's really <laughs> yeah, comes with a shot of wild turkey and a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Pierce Brosnan then, um, I think after he says to his wife that, like, you know, we got, we got nomads, I think, uh, oh, well, he also, he witnesses them murder someone, right? Yeah. This this scene I thought was maybe out of place because after he witnesses this murder, he sees them, you know, he's hiding in like the trash can alley and he sees them like beating some guy to death and throwing his body in a in a, a dumpster. Uh, he still continues to follow them. And when they come over and, you know, start posing for him and his camera, uh, he doesn't seem all that freaked out by the fact that these people are killers. They witnessed him, you know, right. commit a murder. Well, cause he's, he's hiding from them. And then he sees them like actually murder somebody. And at that point he's like, Hey, Hey, he's like getting their attention. It's like, I'm sorry. At this was, this is the point that you should be hiding. You yeah. should not be getting their attention right now. They're- he's the crazy one. I think so. It's the obsessive, right? Yeah. Think yes. about this yeah. movie from their perspective. If some guy was following you for 30 hours, taking pictures of him, you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to kick your ass. Is yeah. that what they want to do? Still looking for motive here on the nomads. What I don't do they... understand anyone's motive in this whole movie. No, <laughs> not at all. Well, to be honest, I had that problem myself <laughs> from scene to scene, just going like, why are they doing that? I don't know. Why are they doing that? I don't know. Um mm-hmm. So, um, so eventually, I mean, there's a bunch of, you know, he hides from the nomads. He hides under their truck and one like dramatic scene doesn't really go anywhere. He gets uh, chased down a bridge, which you should never do run down the center of a road when a truck is uh, coming behind you. Um, there's a whole bunch of like chase shots, but I'm never clear what they're going to do to him if they catch him, you know, or yeah. what they want with him. 
Uh, yeah. The movie never really does make this clear unless the final shot of the movie is some kind of indicator on that. But anyway, he hides inside a, um, I believe it's like a closed nunnery, right? In the middle of da- downtown yes. Los Angeles. The whole movie, you know, it's very urban. So, it, you know, it's all very dusty, deserted kind of uh, Los Angeles exteriors and interiors. So he hides in there and he meets the nun. Um, yeah, creepy nun, because she's got cataracts, right? It's Happy she- Gilmore's grandma, you said. Francis Bay mm. is playing that character. Yes. Yeah, she's the in, sweetest old lady. She's in all <laughs> playing a creepy nun. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, David, Lynch, David Lynch puts her in a bunch of stuff, right? She was in Twin Peaks and all that stuff. No. Um, so what does she so what does she tell him? Because this is the next important piece in understanding what these creatures are. I'm gonna be honest, uh, I don't remember a fucking word she said. <laughs> oh no. I don't either. I'm sorry. No. Everybody's shaking their heads here. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. If this was a final, we'd all be failing this class. Holy yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easily. But again, that's should we fail us or should we fail the movie? That's the, the movie. real question. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm saying this is important, but now in hindsight, I'm thinking uh, uh, a certain um newspaper clipping later may be even more important. But um basically uh, I'm not entirely sure if this nun actually exists, um, but she basically tells him because she has this knowledge about what the nomads are, you know, that they are like wandering spirits and yes. that they, once they once, you know, they just kind of exist out there. But once you become aware of them, they become aware of you. Then they kind of integrate themselves into your life. And she says, you can still survive this, implying that this has a terminal ending for him. It's like, you can still survive this if you pack up all your shit and get out of town, change your profession and just go away, you know? Right. Okay. Yeah, um, I do remember this. And then yes. she disappears. And then we see scenes that I couldn't d- determine what it was of nuns running through hallways. And then there's a hang. Yeah. nun and they're all like grotesque and making faces and there's a flash frame of a corpse nun and you're like what the hell and then he and then wakes up a moment this is when i was like oh this is an a24 movie this was when it clicked for me and i was like yep <laughs> that means there's it's, there's no redeeming it for me at this point <laughs> yeah yeah and then he wakes up in his car so violently that he smashes his head on the windshield to crack it. And this is how he gets a um, uh, injury that we're going to see at the beginning of the movie. And um, I sat there going like, wait, when did he get in his car? Did he ever see the nun in the first place? Has he been there for a while? When was the last time right. he saw him in a car? Was he in a car? I mean, like, I don't even know what the fuck is going on or what happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then he see then he starts seeing the nomad or the punks like in the back of his car. And he gets out of the car and then Adam Ant's standing across the street and so he gets a tire iron out and I'm like, "Okay, so how does this scene play out? Do you just go like, "Hey, you're an immortal spirit or something, right? I should probably like as an anthropologist figure out how you work." Yeah. No, no, I'm going to murder this son of a bitch. Yeah, Yeah, what is his end game with this? What does he like ultimately want? I think this is a test. To tell you the truth, I think he murders him to test and see how it'll end up. I think he's gone that nuts at this point where he's just like, we'll mm-hmm. death and see what happens. Yeah, because they just stare at each other. And then when Pierce Brosnan's like, fine, I'm going to walk slowly up to my house knowing that he's going to come up behind me. And sure enough, Adam Ant, like, just kind of, yeah, he's walking up behind him. You don't get the impression that he's going to hurt him or anything. He's just like, I don't know, a fucking whacked he's just out following dude. following him, yeah. But Pierce Brosnan turns around and brains him a bunch of times with that tire iron and leaves him for dead across the street. At which point, then he goes up to his room and strips naked, stands out the looking out the window at the dead body across the street. Then he crawls into bed with his wife and he starts to make love to her. Then he stops. And then then he wakes up the next morning. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, what? Because it can, I guess. He wakes up the next morning and he goes to the window. Then, bam, it turns out uh, this is now we're switching over to Leslie Ann Down's perspective. Uh, yes. So who's apparently been retracing his steps while seeing his visions in her head and then ends up at his house Yeah, with his, in his wife. wife's arms in bed. Yeah. Well, she the wife is like, no, we, you slept on the couch. It's good that they established right. that because both women like as Leslie and down is wrapped in a bed sheet and nothing else. And the wife is in a, uh, a robe. robe. And I'm yeah. like, 
So let me get this straight. You, this woman shows up at your house and she's all confused, but she seems to know an awful lot about your husband. So you let her go sleep on the couch and then you are completely unguarded. And you're like, I'm just going to go up to my bedroom and everything's fine. And in the morning you wake up and this crazy woman is in your bedroom, naked, wearing a, <laughs> wearing your bed sheet. <laughs> I'm like, what? Right. <laughs> it takes the logic from ghosts too far. <laughs> it pushes yeah. that logic too far. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's out there. <laughs> <laughs> and like it would be one thing if we had been on board with everything else happening in the movie up until this point maybe we could accept one absurdity like this right we if had this been was through a, so many if this was a weird left turn it may have made we yeah you're right we may have accepted it more but right when we're just doing left turns all the time right, right. yeah well, i don't get what this is uh like all of his entire journey um I mean, because basically we're coming to an end of his, right? Although, I mean, I guess, you know, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put this to you guys, right? Uh, at the beginning of the movie, he's, you know, squealing in a, in a, you know, the cops found him on the beach or something and they handcuffed yeah. him and brought him to the emergency room. And so at this point in the narrative uh, where he returns home, right, with his wife, what happened? What's the connective tissue that gets him from the bedroom to the emergency room? I'm getting blank, blank stares right now, but everybody's I don't trying to remember. Think... <laughs> well, I mean, he probably had that gash on his head, right? Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta give the guy medical treatment, right? Even if someone's well, in they custody, keep... they still get medical treatment, right? You're saying, how did he get to the hospital where he's freaking out and everything? Yeah, but he has to get to that point where he's freaking out so much that police would arrest him and say, this is a raving, crazy lunatic, and we have to take him somewhere. Probably, you said, for treatment. There are two other things that happen in the movie that now maybe we have all collectively forgotten. But one, there is a scene disassociated in time where we see... Pierce Brosnan and his wife at the top of a uh, Los Angeles skyscraper looking out over the fog and shrouded and shrouded horizon. And all of a sudden in between them is one of the nomads, uh, one of the biker dudes and Pierce mm -hmm. Brosnan. It's like nobody else can see this nomad except for Pierce Brosnan. I think, I think that's what we're trying to say is that only certain people I even see the nomads. Right. And so he grabs him by the belt buckle and heaves him over the side of the building. Right. And to then, one end, Colin. I, I don't know. Because the scene then, cuts them no, to Leslie then, and down again. And we are like. She wakes up because it's a vision. Yeah. I hate this. I absolutely hate this because this movie does it a couple times. Visions. I, I don't. Yeah. It's cheap. It's, I, it's it, it. It just made me angry because in a movie where I do already don't really understand what's going on. And then you're showing me a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter because that vision doesn't matter. It's not real. Whether it happened or not, it does not matter. And it's a, a pretty, like, it's a sizable little chunk of the movie. Like, why? I, I need more motivation for this and what they're trying to do, because, which this movie is not giving me. Because if it has something to do with, like, you know, he's been just observing and then slowly interacting with them, right, by taking the pictures yeah. and they're aware of him and all that stuff, I would think the... You know, him clubbing Adam Ant to death would serve the same purpose. You're saying that at this point, you know, maybe it's blood for blood or something, you know, but now he's killed two of them. You know, maybe. I don't know. Oh, and, I mean, well, I, I have a theory, but I don't but it include it involves like the end of the movie. So I don't know if we want to go there yet. Um, OK, well, I mean, the only other the only thing that gets us there, uh, one other little thing is there's a flashback and we'll 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 come back to the Leslie and down storyline. But there's mm -hmm. a flashback while uh, her and the wife are being attacked and where we see the nomads beating Pierce Brosnan to death with a bat. But again, yeah. this is all like brief flashes of him being yeah. clubbed with a bat. And we're like, when and, did this happen? When right, did he I, leave? The timeline of this makes no fucking sense at all. I don't know when that happened at the top of the building. I don't know when he was in his driveway. I don't know when he was taken to the emergency room. I don't know any of it. It yeah. makes no sense. Oh, and there's there's one other little clue. Uh, at some point, uh, Leslie Ann Down finds a newspaper clipping in his uh, dresser drawer, which... Uh, it's like a guy died by suicide is the headline. And when she opens it, there's a picture of Adam Ant. And so then this is the mm -hmm. thing that somehow these evil spirits are using the bodies or the likenesses of people who have died. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Okay. Bad, especially specifically bad people that have died. Oh, here's the end shows that too. Yeah. yeah so here's, here's Holly's theory. All here's right. Here my we go. Theory. Here's my theory. I think these demon entities they they push someone into like murdering whether it's murdering an actual person or what or what they think is an actual person if they can get them to that point then when that person dies they become one of them because that's what she said like when the nun says like you just have to leave you just have to not interact you just have to leave then you don't become one of them. But if you interact, because it all involves death, right? Like Adam Ant's character killed himself. So he committed a murder, so to speak, his own murder. And then there's the, um, like the parents that murdered the children in the house. And I, I'm pretty sure the, um, the main like demon woman, I, I, I kind of think she might be like one of those parents that, that was in the clip. They don't say that, but that's just my theory. Um, so that's the thing. If they can get you to get to that point, then when you die, you become one of them. That's my theory. And it's confirmed at the end of this movie when Pierce Brosnan reappears. <laughs> yep. In a very scary scene where he's a biker right. at the very tail end of the movie, witnessed by the wife and Leslie and down as they drive out of California. Also, that last mm -hmm. scene implies that he can't cross the city limits for some reason. State <laughs> yeah. limits. Or the state limits. Oh, yeah, that's right. State You're leaving limits. California. Yeah, they've taken over the whole state now. And you have to go to I like yes. your theory, uh, Holly, because I guess that does give them some motivation. So then we're saying, okay, yeah. that the nomads are just out there kind of trying, like, just. Uh, fucking around until they can add someone to their number and grow because at the right. end of the movie when they're laying siege to the house we do see like a whole shitload of you know i mean basically to be a nomad you wear uh black leather and biker you know uh, stuff or yeah. <laughs> you know long black leather trench coats and all that stuff um but a lot of them show up um and lay siege to the house where the two women are at in the present day right mm -hmm. Um, but what happens there? What's the what? So what are they after in that situation? What do these creatures want? I th I think at that point they want to see if because like Pierce Brosnan is having his own visions during his journey. You know he's he's experiencing his own visions. So now that the same thing is happening to the doctor, I don't, what's her name? I don't remember her name. Um, the same thing that's happening to the to the doctor. Um, they're waiting to see if they can have her cross over. But when she sees her reaction, her reaction is just pure fear and not anger. So she realizes that they, they haven't gotten her. So they back off. Anybody going to dispute that? Anybody got a different <laughs> interpretation? I was going to say, I thought something <laughs> similar, but I thought maybe they thought she was piecing it together too quickly. So they either had to kill her or like run her out of town. If she's like figuring their, their whole shit out. Yeah, because I mean, they break into the house. There's, this is a scene where the two women are eventually have to get up to the, uh, you know, the attic as all the guys and the girls are coming in through the windows and all that and coming up through the floor and all that. And finally, the Mary Warrenov one actually does bust up through the door, you know, the, the, the trap door to the attic and kind of just stares at them. And Leslie Ann Down apparently has a moment of catatonia, at which mm -hmm. point Mary Warrenov smiles and retreats and they all, you know, just disperse and this i'm like made me so mad the fuck oh my god just happened and <laughs> maybe maybe, like maybe that was this, their warning it was all this tension ratcheting up to like and then she finally gets up in the attic and it's like nothing yeah you're fucked <laughs> you're cornered now you have them cornered and then yeah. she just walks away yeah for what reason why well, the only why other thing i can happen? think of is that maybe, i'm guessing they don't want them well like, at this, this point their, like, like get out of town but they've also reached the end of Pierce Brosnan's memories, right? That's why she's, as they're trying to escape, it's intercut with the scenes of him being attacked. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. so, you know, he has left her. Is that what we're supposed to get out of her going kind of catatonic? Is like, okay, now she's going to be herself 100% again and not with this other guy's, like, uh, you know, consciousness or soul or memories, like, in her head. Maybe that. Uh, that sounds about, uh, that could be it. He, she gets to the end of his memories and she's done. And they're I'll just go with like, that. They're like, okay, bye. Bye. We'll get everything we wanted out of you. We got our dude. Yeah. It, I mean, it fits in with everything else in this movie. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> 
And yeah, then sure enough, then that's followed up by like, oh my God, Pierce Brosnan has now become one of the the nomads, which apparently Leslie and Down uh, kind of had the idea of because she's telling the wife, like, whatever you do, whatever you see, just kind of keep driving. And of course, yeah. the wife sees, you know, she looks over at the biker and it's like, oh no, it's my husband, you know, the terror. This was funny to me because they they hold on a close up of him for so long that like you can actually take in all the like, costume stuff they gave him to be the biker version like he's got a bunch of gaudy like r- like rings that look like skulls yeah. and shit and like just looking at those details on pierce brosnan and how long they hang on him is just really funny to me yeah it's uh it's something else i don't know yeah this is a it's a very bizarre head scratcher kind of a movie but i assume that's what the intention was is uh i think i told you guys in the chat i'm like this is a movie right that's made for people who don't like it's a horror movie made for people who don't like horror movies you know it's like i don't like all that you know friday the 13th gore and all that stuff but i do like to be you know challenged and kind of have uh you know like an well i guess now we're calling it like an elevated horror experience where this is just creepy and you know it gives me a chance to chew on all of this stuff like uh you know figuring out what the motives for what's happening right. it's for the people I've, who spend a lot of time in los angeles art galleries uh pondering the art well, and i also <laughs> think it's one of those that, like movies that because it doesn't make sense people think it must be really smart you know i think it's one yeah, of those right. like well, i couldn't follow the plot so it must be genius you know like it must just be got, like above my understanding plus it's got french people in it so they're just like it's ah, true it's french. <laughs> and, I, and colin i resent that i like hanging out in art museums i know i know i was making a joke everything it's, a, it's my delivery uh so okay well maybe that's a maybe that's a now we got to tell you whether or not we're gonna recommend the movie um Wait, is there any other stray observations about scenes that we missed or characters that we didn't cover, like the friend who swears I'm like sure a sailor? I mean, there was that the scene that looked cool. like a cool music video, you know, where Pierce Brosnan's being chased through like alleys and shit. And yeah, I've seen was, enough uh, MTV music videos where you're like, okay, yeah, this where is it's all like par for the course. It's really extremely backlit, you know, with those big like yeah. lights everywhere he and runs, fog, and, and you're running through an abandoned building and shit. Yeah, well, I mean, we were at the height of uh, the MTV stylings, you know, but that's why I got to go back and read some contemporary reviews to see if they were associating it, you know, with like, uh, this is a music video or, you know, whatever. But that's why I wonder if like McTiernan, if he got his uh, start in design or sculpture or music videos or something like that, was he an art student that ended up as a as a filmmaker? I don't know. And I'm, I'm curious to find out a little bit more about the man. I probably should look that up before this episode. I apologize. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, uh, hang with us. First of all, we're going to uh, answer some of your mail in order to do that. We're going to have to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. No ads. Shit, I'm sorry. Igor got you, like all the skull rings and like bandanas on, just like. Did Pierce you know Brosnan that? Did you know that Igor was French? <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah. parts, parts of him are French. Well, yeah, parts of him. Parts of it. I bet yes. his French accent is better than Pierce Brosnan. It is spot on. You guys should hear it. And a traveling nomad himself. Uh, so we want to remind you how you can write in to, uh, for this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. MF Matt the keeper of the Saturday night freak show wall of fame wants to let us know that we've inducted three people into the, or onto the wall, uh, with the nomads. Uh, first of all, he says he dropped the ball with, uh, Mary Warrenov. He says that she should have been on the wall a while ago. She was in death race 2000, which we did. She was in nomads as the dancing, uh, nomad. She was in chopping mall and she was in warlock. So Mary Warrenov. <laughs> so she's, Congrats. she's got, she got quite the filmography, doesn't she? Yep. Is she the wall or is she the hallway? Uh, that's she's on the, yeah, Mary Warrenov's a fixture, her and, uh, and Paul, Paul Bartel. We just haven't done a lot of his, uh, 
his appearances. Um, Frances Bay was, uh, I believe she was the nun, right? In Nomad, she was also in Arachnophobia, and she was in In the Mouth of Madness. She was Miss Pickman in that. Uh, J.J. Saunders was Court in Nomads. He was also in Mac and Me as the judge, and he was in Tammy and the T-Rex as Sheriff Ooh, Black. Those are so, all movies I brought. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. There you go. So thank you, <laughs> MF Mad. Uh, he should be he should be proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, JJ I guess Saunders. I'm secretly yeah. a fan. <laughs> I think but wasn't he in Clue also? Did we do Clue? I think we did. Isn't yeah, he? Yeah, you like guys, the I think you guys did do Clue. Policeman who comes Somebody by, I could clue. be wrong. Okay. Uh no, that's not him. Sorry. Uh so Grant Parrish about tonight's movie Nomads. Uh Grant Parrish writes in and says, based on the voluminous hair and sultry blue eyes of Pierce Brosnan, it looks like you're all in for a good time. Mm. You know, that's what I thought. And that's, you know, oh, part of why it? I picked it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Michael Whitaker says, I have never seen it, but no movie with Pierce Brosnan or Adam Ant can be terrible, right? Right. Well, that logic is sound. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> these are the, these are like all the thoughts I had watching the trailer and seeing that sweet ass poster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and should have watched Dante's Peak. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> or lawnmower. That's the one where that grandma cannot... walks in the lava water, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the volcano <laughs> murdered my wife. Uh, Disworld says the only thing that uh, I really remember about this movie is Pierce Brosnan versus Adam Ant. So there you go. That's what you take away from sure. Nomads. Uh, about last week's movie, that was Dracula 2000. Grant Parrish wrote it again, said Johnny Lee Miller was Mr. Angelina Jolie, the first of his name. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to mention ever, that on that show. Has he ever had a good haircut? I don't feel like it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Um, I I listened back to that Dracula 2000 episode. Uh, I don't remember any of that movie apparently because it sounds fucking wild. It was. I, I don't it remember that fun. third act. I know. I, I should change my review on that one. I'm still. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, Travis Legler said that because uh, we were saying nobody talks about Spin City. He's like that was a great show. Christopher Lloyd was a guest. Michael J. Fox did a TV ad for it with a DeLorean. You know, one of the sexiest cars ever. Spin City is like the red green show. It's classic. I smil- smiled just hearing you guys say the title. We brought that up because uh, Jennifer Esposito was in. That's right. Dracula uh, 2000 uh, Spin City. Yeah. Uh, about our episode on Howard the Duck. Kryptonian Orphan wrote in and said about the uh, unusual coupling between Leah Thompson and Howard the Duck, that Leah Thompson paved the way for interspecies love way before Beauty and the Beast and The Shape of Water. Please know, I'm a huge MCU and overall comics fan, but a Howard the Duck film we don't need. I mean, true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right. Michael Whitaker says, uh, before you move on from Howard the Duck completely, I should say that the last bit of weird trivia I know is Chip Zine, the voice of Howard, did an episode of CSI, which also starred Paul Gilfoyle, who played the cop who headed out for Howard in the movie. Honestly, I knew this because my wife loves CSI, and I just randomly stumbled on the episode. Uh-huh. There you go. Funny. And Ryan <laughs> Handsome Jansen writes in to say that Willard Huck directed the duck ah <laughs> what's it how do you say it? william yuck 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 directed yuck. the duck okay there you go um <laughs> about the previous week's episode swamp thing uh travis legler right in said i'm not a huge fan of the god's not dead films but ray wise was in god's not dead too where he plays a lawyer who i swear is possessed by the devil with all the evil grins he gives. Hmm. Told you, he's scary in everything he's in. Doesn't matter what the role it is. It's true. Ray Wise is terrifying. Yeah. He saved the world in Jeepers Creepers 2. I mean, he did. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to use know. Jeepers Creepers in any <laughs> argument, you're already losing. So. <laughs> there he is. And we don't know if he saved it, Colin. He was still waiting for that thing to come He back. was really good sure, in this true. movie directed by a convicted pedophile is what I'm hearing you say, Colin. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, Robin Linderman Silverberg says, uh, pre James Bond, he remembers, uh, Louis Jordan from Gigi, Gigi, anybody, Gigi, Gigi. No, didn't Gigi. that win? 
Like best picture winner, Gigi? I think so. Gigi? Gigi? Gigi. Very yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, he's French. And it's a private it's French. France. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, Gigi has slipped completely Gigi. out of my... Uh, and uh, about the ending of the movie, Bishaw Foolery says, ha ha ha, even Adrian Barbeau's boobage fa- failed to outshine this sword-swinging pig bear that could have fit in on <laughs> the Princess Bride, the one that showed up at the end of Swamp Thing. a pig bear. All right, so that brings us to the most exciting part of the show, and that's where we go around the table and tell you whether or not you should watch Nomads, starting with... Howie. Oh, <laughs> so excited to go first. I thought you, needed, you needed to get this out, so go ahead. We. 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 Oh. Um... I... I just don't know about this movie. I <laughs> we could we could probably just do a whole group review. On you this sound one. so defeated. <laughs> it's I a am defeating a defeating movie because yeah, it is a defeating movie because I'm just like I don't know what I watched. I don't know what was going on. I don't know the timeline. I don't know any motivation. I just don't know. You know, I, I I've got. A vague theory on part of this movie and that's like all i can hold on to the rest of it is just i don't know we saw pierce brosnan naked i mean there's that i don't know what you do with that it was weird it was a weird scene <laughs> i don't i don't know this is just a weird ass movie it's not my cup of tea by any means like we've compared it to other movies that i equally don't like so i'm just like you 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 know you get the idea i compared it to possession and i fucking hated that movie so yeah i was bored i was lost it's not comprehensive it makes it's terrible it's a terrible movie i i i th- you know michaela said in our group chat that she got maloned i think she did she got maloned <laughs> i think you did what does that mean <laughs> uh the maloned is uh something i did last year i brought the movie malone because it was the best fucking trailer ever and then the movie sucked balls so it's a bill of false goods yeah so yeah michaela i think you got maloned i i i'm shocked that this movie led to a, just a stream of wonderful movies it blows my mind um yeah i i can't i don't know why anyone would like this arnold schwarzenegger i would love to sit down and have a chat with you about why you like this movie so much <laughs> truthfully if i could sit down with arnie and have a talk i think all of my questions would be about this movie like <laughs> i i don't understand so yeah no i think it's safe to say you can pass on on nomads you're not gonna be missing anything sean what did you think <laughs> just keep on wandering you're not you're not missing anything here yeah <laughs> um uh nomads um jesus this movie um it has, I mean, it's got an atmosphere. It, it, it has, it has a feeling to it. Um, it is. Is the feeling confusion? Is that it? I mean, I, th- <laughs> I don't, I, to, I need to read an explanation for the, I, I want to know what John McTiernan was thinking with this movie. Yeah. Um, I, I really do. And I might do a little research and track that down, but this movie is whatever they were going for. I don't know. I don't think they pulled it off. Not to me anyway, because this, there's no, you you don't know what's going on. Um, It doesn't help that they're French and hearing what they're saying is also a problem in this movie. Like I I wasn't able to pick up all the words they were saying in their accents. Plus they're doing a lot of stuff in French. It's a very, I think it can be a very confusing movie. I don't know what's happening. What's real. What's not, and I know that movies do that because they want to, you know, they want to mess with you until we get to an end. But doing those things does not help this movie. I think it just confuses the audience. Um, I don't think there's anything. I mean, you can pick up tidbits from this movie, but I don't think there's a, a real, a real answer for this movie. And that doesn't have to be with movies. But for this one, I, we needed something, and I didn't get it. I didn't get much from this movie. Um, I, uh, no way would I recommend this movie. This is um, for a movie that made Fangoria's uh, Fangoria list of hundred horror movies, hundred great horror movies you haven't re- seen. Did this it really? Movie, yes, it did. Um, 
I don't know how. Like, maybe Screen Factory if we released were... a like special Blu-ray of this too. Yeah. Wow. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe it was expectations going in, but I mean, looking at this movie, like, no way. I mean, I was I was bored. I was confused. Um, you know, it's no. I just <laughs> bluff. It's bluff. <laughs> oh. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. Like no no no. So I pass on nomads. I it's uh no no. I'm very angry that I had to watch this movie. No. <laughs> uh so that's a no uh, uh colin i mean you follow this perfectly from beginning to end so what did you think of nomads <laughs> uh well i mean it to me it struck me as like this might be like uh you know something it's like a story that maybe you could do as like an episode of the twilight zone or something like sure. that i can see it done in in that way where it would be you know kind of more my speed but instead it was like okay we're gonna we're gonna dress this up and uh you know i mean you know when i say art film and i think michaela nailed it it's it's an a24 movie out of time um but it's this um i get that you know you're saying that you know sean was saying you know you find out what was going on in in john mctiernan's head but i think a lot of these you know the whole idea of an art movie is that you know the filmmaker doesn't ever want to tell you because they want to give you an impression right uh, the thing i wanted to say to you i did i communicated it in my art and my art is the entirety of the thing and anything that i would tell you is just going to color your perception of it what how it matters is how you feel about it well i'll tell you how i feel about it uh I sat there going like, um, I didn't feel, cause I think what you're, I think what you are supposed to feel is the, uh, tension, uh, paranoia, uh, sense of helpless, helplessness or just impending doom. Right. This is what it wants to do, but I'm saying it's not successful in it. I mean, there was enough of that there that I was like, okay, this is, that's the impression they're trying to give to you through the Pierce Brosnan character, right? That this is all headed in one direction. There's no way that I can pull up, you know, I'm, I see the brick wall coming and there's nothing I can do and I'm being chased, you know, by phantoms. Um, but actually this begs a question is like, what was the point of having the Leslie and down character in the movie at all? Like, why did we have to extract his consciousness into, I mean, I suppose that it somehow creates a mystery at the very beginning of the movie, which was kind of intriguing, but then it's like the movie basically settles into, here's the story about this anthropologist who, you know, starts discovering that street people are nomads. I'm like, why, why isn't that just the story by itself? Yeah. And because especially the Leslie and down uh, storyline doesn't really have uh, a satisfactory ending. It's just, they come up and they're like, boo. And she's like, ah! they're like, okay, we're going we're gonna to leave you alone. You know, there's no way to actually connect the two storylines. So it's like, wh I don't know. As So as from a narrative standpoint, it's a, it's a complicated it's overcomplicating something which should be, like I said, a Twilight Zone idea, <laughs> something that should have been simpler and more direct. Um, but obviously, this is the way that he wanted to tell it. And uh, I don't know. It's hard to follow. I think like, you know, we've kind of pieced together what could be a, uh, a, 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 a motivation or a reason or why things are happening. But I think as you're watching the movie, even if you're going with that, it's like it's impossible to really tell when things are real and when they aren't and why that matters at all. Um, so I don't know. I, I uh, well, I mean, I do know that this is a definite pass. Uh, I think it's an un it's unsuccessful in communicating its idea. Um, so that you, you, that's a fail. <laughs> so, uh, no, you, you can you can keep on like. Sean said, wandering the globe like a nomad and never actually see the movie Nomads unless somebody wants mm -hmm. to remake I'd rather the idea. than watch this again. Yeah. Uh, Michaela, what'd you think? You know, I I feel very misled by the poster. How'd you hear about this? Uh, I heard it mentioned on another podcast and they were kind of talking about how like it's like that like a yuppie couple moves to the suburbs and they find out like there's a dark side of the suburbs was kind of like how they posited it. And I was like, that makes sense, but that's not also not this movie at all. That's not uh, what we got. That would be a much easier plot for this like thread for this movie to follow. And we would all be on board with it. Like, and like, you know, I feel like the movie misleads us in so many ways at so many different points because like, 
the we didn't really touch on it, but the van that these nomads are driving around is like all black, kind of tactical looking, and like the windows are blacked out, like the fucking van in uh, near dark. Like mm-hmm. to me, that's like that's shorthand for vampire, right? Like or something. You got to hide something, right? That's why the windows are all blacked out in this van. It doesn't mean anything. It's it doesn't mean anything. Just like a lot of yeah. things in this movie, it doesn't mean anything. It, I Scrap yeah. It in. Right. I just, I totally got Maloned and I guess it's got to happen to all of us eventually, but <laughs> Happen, happens to the best still of us. Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's like on paper, this sounds like a cool movie. The poster looks fucking dope, but there's definitely monsters on that poster that aren't yeah. in the movie. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, it's just unfortunate because this could have been cool. It sounds like it should be cool, but it's not. And I just like, I, I do feel a little defensive of it because if you're someone out there that likes possession or you like a 24 movies, you cannot talk shit about this movie. Don't even fucking start with that because <laughs> you like it in you like it in a modern context. You just don't like it in an eighties context, I guess. I mean, I guess possessions from the eighties, but like, there's a lot of people out there that will die on the hill of defending possession that I feel like would also talk shit about this movie. And to me, you cannot do that. Like, this is just as nonsensical as I that was movie like, was. Colin, no, that's you're me. Yeah. calling Colin yeah, out yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, well, Colin, I think you're, I, I disagree with that big time because that movie made just as much sense as this movie. And yet people love that movie for some reason. Don't get it. But yeah, once it clicked to me, I was like, oh, this is just going to be an A24 movie. There's not going to be a big ratchet up to anything. There's not going to be a big reveal. This is the movie, like just a bunch of nonsensical things that are meant to be like passably scary i guess but they weren't um i guess the best thing about this movie is like pierce brosnan's beard it's and, a good beard and yeah. that's about it like the 80s music the music is pretty fun at times and but he should rock the beard more you know give it another chance yeah. a good look but yeah Hard pass on this movie. It was boring. It was confusing. It was just an all around frustrating time. Thank God it was only 93 minutes. That oh, man. Demon quality. Still, it's only 93 I was still minutes. checking the time. I'm like, woof, 43 minutes in. Man, we got a while to yeah. go. Uh, it yeah. It still felt quicker to me than Howard the Duck, though. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's true. So, you know, at least it gets points for, for knowing when to call it, you know? True. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, hard pass on this movie. I'm super disappointed. I don't want you guys to feel that disappointment. So, <laughs> all right. So that's a that's a, a total freak show pass for Nomads. Uh, next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Colin. We'll watch it next week. Next week we're going to watch a. Have, when's the last time we did a David Cronenberg movie? Ooh. It's been a, it's been a while. Let's bring David Cronenberg back to the freak show. We'll do a movie called Shivers, also known as Ooh, They Came okay. From Within. Ah, okay, <laughs> I've seen this. I've never seen this either. Mm-hmm. Uh, Me neither. All right, well, there you go. Shivers next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.